Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to introduce a new very commonly used form control in Angular Material which is the select drop down box. This is useful for fields such as for example the category field that can have multiple different options such as for example beginner, intermediate, advanced etc. So let's have a look at what this field looks like, let's talk about some of the most useful options that it provides such as for example the ability to select multiple values or to categorize the multiple options into different groups. Let's first give the simplest example which is a plain select box with multiple options. Now unlike the radio group that we have presented in our previous lesson, this field should be wrapped here in a material form field directive. So let's add inside our material form field the material select drop down. Just like we did for our input field, we can configure here the look and feel of the material select drop down using here the appearance property. Let's set it for example to fill for example. We are going to have a look at what other appearances we have available. Right now we just want to link here this material select box to our form control here in our form definition. So we want to link this here to the category field and we can do so using as usual the form control name directive. Now we want to link our material select box here to this form field, the category form field. We can do so by applying as usual the form control name directive here directly on the material select control. And let's link this to the category field. Let's also define here a text placeholder that will be visible in the material select box when no value is selected yet. We are just going to add the text here, select category. Now it's time to add here the multiple options of our select box. We can add a new option by using the math option directive. Let's first add here the text that the user is going to see on the screen. So the first option is going to be beginners and the value of this option is going to be also beginners with lowercase. Again, these two values could be completely different. And I'm going to quickly add here a couple more options. So this is going to be the intermediate option and the advanced option. Now in this particular case, the values are known up front, so we can add them directly to the template. But if you need to lower these values from the backend and to list them dynamically, you can also do so by applying here the ng4 directive to mat option. So the values of your select box do not have to be predetermined up front. They can also be found dynamically at runtime. Now you would think at this point that the material select dropdown is actually very similar to a radio button group and that it also doesn't have a lot of customization options. That is actually not the case. Here with the material select box we can break down the multiple options into groups, we can enable multiple selections, so it's a much more powerful component for handling the selection of a list of predetermined values. But first let's have a look at what this simple example looks like on the screen. Let's then switch here to a larger window where we can see here our select drop down with our free available options. So we can see here the background, this is due to the use of the fill appearance. Let's have a look at the other appearances. So we can also set here this for example to outline and here is what the outline select box is going to look like. We can see that this is much closer to a typical select box that we see on other websites and you can also leave this without any appearance and that is going to apply the default appearance to the select dropdown. So we can see if we check what this looks like, this will give it the typical material look and feel without any border. Now in the case of this dropdown, we always have to select here a value, but in some cases we might want to add here to the list a none option for fields that can accept a blank value. We can do so by adding here a new option to our material select box. So let's add here the math option directive. Let's add here some text for this default option. Let's set this to none and let's not add any value here to this option. 
So this way, when this option gets selected, the value is going to be set to null. Let's try this out. So we can see here in our dropdown that we have here the none option and that when we select it, the field gets empty and marked in red because in our form this is a mandatory field so it always has to have some value selected. So in the particular case of this form this would cause an error. This is just for demonstration purposes for fields that might not be mandatory. A very useful feature of select dropdowns is the ability of organizing the multiple options into different groups. For example, you can organize a list of countries per continent and this is in general useful when you have a lot of options available on the list. So let's see how this works in Angular Material. We can, instead of listing here the options, we can create here what is known as option groups using the math opt group directive. We need to add here a label to this group. So let's create here a group that is going to specify in more detail what type of beginner user the user is. We are going to split this into, for example, users new to JavaScript, new to programming, etc. So let's start by adding here a new label. This is going to be the beginners group. And I'm going to quickly paste in here three different options. So we are going to have here the option new to programming, new to JavaScript and new to Angular. So this is inside here our option group and we can also have here other options outside the group. Let's have a look at what option groups look like. So if we select our drop down, we can see here the beginners group. We can see here the option none. And if you now scroll down, you're going to see here the other options available. So as we can see, this is very useful for organizing long selection lists. Now let's talk about the ability of selecting multiple elements of a list. So in the particular case of this list, this would not be applicable, but let's just demonstrate how we would do it. It's very simple. This component is extremely powerful and all we have to do is to add here the multiple property here to the select box. And that's all that we need to do in order to activate multiple selection. So if we open now here our selection box, we can see here a checkbox next to every option that allows us to, when we close here this box, to select multiple options at the same time. So the form value for this field is going to be an array containing the values of each option selected. As we can see, even though it didn't look like it initially, the material select component is actually a much more powerful component than the radio button. The radio button is ideal when you only have a few options that typically you know up front, while the select dropdown is much more useful when there are a lot more options available in your list and you want to group them in groups, for example. And with this, we now know the most useful options of the material select component. Let's now move on to another very commonly used component, the date picker. The date picker is one of the most powerful and configurable components of the whole Angular material library and we are going to cover it in detail in our next lesson. Right now, in order to finish this lesson, one last thing. Let's make sure that we remove here the multiple option from our material select box, otherwise our form would throw an error. Because remember that the field category that we are using here for the select dropdown is not a multiple options field, it's a single value field.